In this episode of Unveiling Physics, we will leap into the history of neutrinos and unmask the many features of this fascinating particle. A neutrino is an elementary particle of the standard model, just like an electron. However, unlike the electron, it has no electric charge. Also, these neutral particles do not exist within atoms as we know them. So where did they come from? And why are they here? Neutrinos are created through many processes all over the universe. They're traveling from all directions at almost the speed of light and come in large numbers. More than one trillion neutrinos, yep, that's a lot of zeros, are passing through our body every second, but we don't feel anything because they barely interact with matter. Since the probability of neutrinos interacting with matter is so small, we must build huge detectors and special instruments to study them. Some neutrinos were created in the early universe, otherwise known as the Big Bang era. Others are constantly being created in various processes in space and on Earth. For example, neutrinos created from exploding supernovas, the death of massive stars, reactions in nuclear power plants, and other naturally occurring radioactive decays, even inside our bodies. An average of 5,000 neutrinos per second is released when an isotope of potassium decays. So think about that fact the next time you're eating bananas. Most of the neutrinos that reach Earth come from nuclear reactions inside the Sun. The neutrinos are the second most numerous particles in the entire universe, second only to the photons which are the particles associated with light. Until some years ago, neutrinos were thought to be massless particles like photons, but they do in fact have mass, even if it's super small. Discovering their precise mass is bound to lead to fundamental changes in our knowledge of physics and astronomy. Many more discoveries about neutrinos are yet to be made. After radioactivity was discovered in 1897 by Henry Becquerel, Many other scientists, such as Marie Curie and Ernest Rutherford, pioneered this research to establish the different properties of radioactivity. Among those, the so-called beta radioactivity turned out to be a puzzle. The electrons that came out of beta decay did not have a single energy link to this process. Instead, these beta electrons had a continuous spectrum of energies. This seems to contradict the principle of conservation of energy, which is one of the foundations of physics. In 1930, Wolfgang Pauli suggested a unique solution to this puzzle. If another invisible particle was emitted with the electron, it could take away part of the energy and thus conservation of energy prevails. Pauli's suggestion was famously stipulated in a letter that begins, Dear Radioactive Ladies and Gentlemen. At the time, the idea was fully hypothetical and Pauli jokingly said to a friend, I have done a terrible thing. I have postulated a particle that cannot be detected, but alas, an idea was born. Soon after, Enrico Fermi was able to demonstrate an elegant theory that included Pauli's lightweight neutral particle, he called it the neutrino. Fermi made the neutrino the basis of his famous theory of beta decay and showed that in the beta decay of a nucleus, an electron and a neutrino are simultaneously created. This was the first theory of one of the four fundamental forces, the weak force. No one could predict that this tiny particle would revolutionize both particle physics and cosmology. In the subsequent decades, beta decays of many atomic nuclei were experimentally studied. All of them agreed with Fermi's theory. Finally, in the 1950s, the existence of the neutrino was experimentally proved by Cowan and Rhines after the neutrinos left traces in a detector near nuclear power plants. Since the 1960s, scientists had theoretically calculated the number of neutrinos that were created in the nuclear reactions that make the sun shine. But when carrying out the measurements on Earth, up to two-thirds of the calculated amount was missing. Where did the neutrinos go? There was no lack of suggestions. Maybe there was something wrong with the theoretical calculations of how the neutrinos are produced in the sun. One of the other suggestions to solve the solar neutrino puzzle was that the neutrinos change identities, 
or more commonly known as flavor. According to the standard model of particle physics, there are three types of neutrinos, electron neutrinos, muon neutrinos, and tau neutrinos. Each has its respective charged partner, the electron, and it's two much heavier and short-lived relatives, the muon and the tau. The sun only produces electron neutrinos, but if they would be transformed to muon or tau neutrinos on their way to Earth, that would make the deficit of the captured electron neutrinos understandable. Near the late 1990s, two experiments, Super Kamiokande and the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory, confirmed the suspicion that neutrinos can change from one identity to the other. The discovery has encouraged many experiments and inspired particle physicists to think in new ways. Together, these two experiments have given rise to a groundbreaking conclusion. The neutrino oscillations require that the neutrinos have mass, otherwise they cannot change flavors. Understanding the quantum mechanics of these oscillations is key to explaining this phenomenon. It has become obvious that the standard model cannot be the complete theory of how the fundamental constituents of the universe behave. Several key questions about the nature of the neutrino need to be answered before new theories beyond the standard model can be fully developed. What are the neutrino masses? Why are they so lightweight? Are there more types of neutrinos than we currently know? Are the neutrinos their own antiparticles? Why are they so different from other elementary particles? New experimental developments and discoveries of the neutrino closely guarded secrets are expected to change our understanding of the history, structure, and the future fate of the universe.